Software today is better than software tomorrow. Or from a different perspective, perfection is the enemy of good. Perfection is the enemy of good enough. Or from a different perspective, think about the classical saying, a bird in the hand is better than 10 in the forest. Let's talk about this. <clears throat> given the topics of the videos that I make and given the sort of sometimes borderline aggressive style that I make the videos in, I think it's kind of easy to think that I'm sort of this insane perfectionist who refuses to accept any code that is not close to perfect. But this, of course, isn't necessarily true. I think it was Albert Einstein who said that in theory, theory and practice are the same, but in practice, they're not. So there are times when I too am pragmatic. There are times too when I sort of give up on perfection in exchange for being able to ship quicker, being able to ship today, being able to actually get some code down on the screen, punching out the keys today. Which is why I'm saying software today is better than software tomorrow. I'd like to talk about this from two perspectives. On one end, that it may actually be economically more rational to ship poor software today than perfect software tomorrow. And secondly, that if you are too focused on perfection, you may get bogged down and it may be that you're never actually successfully being able to produce the software. It may be that you get so stuck on trying to create the perfect software that you never actually get around to completing it. So in economics, there's this concept of the time value of money. And essentially it's about that different economic agents, I as an economic agent, right? When I engage in economic activities, I'm an economic agent. Different economic agents have different time preferences. And that means that they value their time differently. So essentially this is about opportunities. It's about opportunity cost. So if you think about a large firm, for example, a large firm with a lot of capital may ha have a lot of investment opportunities. So the point is that if they're investing in a project, if they're, if they're evaluating whether they should invest in a project, and if the project is expected to yield a certain amount in return, it matters whether it yields that in a very short time or in a very long time. Because if it, if it does that in a very long time, then they could have used the capital that they used to invest in the project and to invest in, say, the stock market or other investment opportunities. And through that yield equivalent or more gains. So again, it's the opportunity cost. Opportunity costs are the alternative costs. In other words, when you're selecting one alternative, you are foregoing the ability to select other alternatives. So when you as a firm have finite capital and you take some of that finite, finite capital and deploy against some investment, you're foregoing the, the opportunity to use that capital elsewhere. So of course then you have to measure whether the elsewhere or where you want to deploy the capital will yield the most returns. So to take opportunity cost into, into account when you're calculating an investment, there's this thing called discount rate. So you discount the value of capital when that capital appears in the future. Or let, let, let's put it more correctly. You discount the value of a cash flow when that cash flow, when you're expecting that cash flow to appear in the future and not today. So in economics, quite literally, if you have a high time preference, as I can't remember whether it's high or low, but if you have a high opportunity cost, let's say that's a high time preference, then quite literally a dollar today is more worth than a dollar tomorrow. And if you think about it, of course that makes a lot of sense because if you get the dollar today, you can deploy that dollar against some investments today, uh, start to yield returns from that from today. But if you get it tomorrow, you can only start tomorrow. So let's tie this back to software, right? So in software, I rather think the thing is that competitive advantage or engaging in the marketplace. If you ship today, you can engage in the marketplace from today. If you ship today, you have the chance of using your product to create value, to create cash flow from today. But if you wait until tomorrow, you have to wait until tomorrow to create cash flow. So it's quite possible that by delivering a non-perfect product, the cash flow won't be as high as if you would have waited until you created the perfect product. But it's still not necessarily so that that's a worse investment. Yes, it could be that by waiting until you've created the perfect product, you could create cash flows that are larger. But if you think about the sum, taking the time value of money into account, it's not necessarily so that waiting until and waiting and creating the perfect product will create in the end a higher cash flow than will shipping the product today having subpar cash flows, but instead getting those cash flows over time. 
And again, time value of money, right? So, so these cash flows, this capital, this finite capital can be used to deploy against other investment opportunities, meanwhile, such as, for example, bettering the product. So that's what I wanted to say about economics. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you think that this was majorly confusing and if I'm making no sense. Let's talk about the second point. This one is very short. I just want to make sure to remind us all that getting caught up in perfection is risky. Being too concerned about perfection is risky in the sense that we might just keep hammering on the product and hammering on the code and hammering on the architecture and redesigning and redesigning and refactoring and, and never sort of getting that source code into the system and out to the clients or deployed into the world. In some sense, we'll never have a product. So when you start to work on a commit for days, if you haven't checked into version control for days, then that's probably a sign that maybe you're pushing it too far, right? It's better just to get that in, pragmatism, get that stuff in, make a note somewhere, somewhere that you will see, right? And somewhere that you will take action upon that, that something needs to be refactored. And then you'll refactor that. Think about that other saying, when you're about to make a change, first make the change easy and then make the change. And the joke is that the first part might be the difficult part. So likely you'll be in touch with that code again and when you are you then you'll refactor so i mean don't get too caught up in trying to produce the perfect software right now just make sure you have shippable software right now but of course that doesn't mean that you should be sloppy with your architecture of course that doesn't mean that you should check in sloppy code like just hack up anything that works not necessarily there's always the trade-off there's always this delicate balance so i like to think of it this way i'm thinking that there's sort of this continuum where some people are not enough concerned, not concerned enough with really architecturing their systems, really thinking about their design, really thinking long term. And some people are way too extreme in the amount they think about architecture in the time they spend on trying to make things more perfect. And I think I'm probably more on the on this end of the scale on the more extreme end of the scale. So I'm one of these people who have to remind myself about pragmatism, who have to remind myself about making sure that we ship software today because it's more valuable today than it is tomorrow. Time is the enemy, right? But again, there are a lot of people on the other end of the spectrum. There are a lot of people who would benefit from thinking more about design and how to figure out which end you are on the spectrum or where you are on the spectrum. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm just spontaneously thinking that this is probably where code reviews becomes very, very useful. It's difficult to assess where you are yourself on that scale. So I'm thinking that sort of collectively when we're using code reviews, we'll over time calibrate with each other. And of course, there's the risk of herd behavior, herd mentality here. So there's of course the risk that if we have the majority of people on either end of the spectrum, that they will sort of weigh us into that end, right? So we'll converge towards being too extreme in either end. So there's always the risk of that, of course. But other than that, it's of course introspection, trying to figure out where you are on that spectrum and trying to figure out where the optimal point on that spectrum is. I'm not at all saying it's easy. If it was easy, I would tell you how it was, but it's probably difficult to figure out. But those are my two points. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want more content like this. Tons of stuff coming on software development. I'll see you in the next one.